As much as crypto and Cardano seem to have hurdles to surmount and enemies to defeat, it's also easy to forget that crypto is an incredibly viral movement that has infiltrated every strata of Western society. We're already everywhere and we probably can't be stopped. Ready? Let's go. Today, we are going to discuss the extent to which our crypto agents are hiding our propaganda everywhere, sanctions compliance getting a little trickier every day, a very special Cardano epic, and some Cardano music. If you feel like this unnamed but familiar looking individual could have at least changed out his white business shirt before donning his ghillie suit to infiltrate this barren desert landscape, or if you're finding value in these videos each weekday, please consider delegating to the Army of Spies stake pool, ticker AOS. You might be aware that the Kennedys are maybe the closest thing the U.S. has ever had to a political royal family. And you might also be aware that today, one of the offspring of that family declared that he's going to run for president. But what you might not know is what he talked about right before that declaration. In this post, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. wanted to talk about nothing but CBDCs. And his approach to that topic is going to sound very familiar to anybody in crypto. He says, the Fed just announced it will introduce its FedNow central bank digital currency, CBDC, in July. CBDCs grease the slippery slope to financial slavery and political tyranny. While cash transactions are anonymous, a CBDC will allow the government to surveil all our private financial affairs. A CBDC tied to digital ID and social credit score will allow the government to freeze your assets or limit your spending to approved vendors if you fail to comply with our arbitrary dictates. The Fed will initially limit its CBDC to interbank transactions, but we should not be blind to the obvious danger that this is the first step in banning and seizing Bitcoin. <laughs> He's actually talking about Bitcoin as the treasury did with gold 90 years ago today in 1933. Man, when I first heard about Bitcoin, just the thought of some member of the Kennedy family running for president and openly talking about Bitcoin would have been unbelievable, or any crypto, any crypto at this point, almost unbelievable. We've had a few candidates, you know, who've addressed crypto, some favorably, um, but it's 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 kind of amazing to me that the infiltration of crypto is so deep and so broad now. The idea of crypto is so appealing; it has so much virality that. When somebody hears about it, it's it's almost hard to unhear that a thing like crypto, especially hard cap cryptos, could exist that totally deletes all of the central bank nonsensical monetary manipulation that has such a huge impact on all of our global economies. It's hard to unhear that we could live in a world where none of that is the case. And I think that applies to people at all levels of society, people in government, people out of government, people in corporations. I think there are certain people when they hear about this, it's instantly so appealing that it's going to infect their thoughts anytime the subject of money and economics comes up. And this applies even to people from famous political families who decide to run for president. But it's not just political figures. The idea of crypto is appealing to people in all sorts of professions, maybe especially software development, as we can see from this post. The Bitcoin white paper appears to be hidden in every Apple Mac computer running Mac OS Catalina or newer. And they've got this video showing you exactly how to find a copy of the Bitcoin white paper that's been hidden on your newer Mac. This, I think this is why crypto is so unstoppable. If you bought a Mac since Catalina, you've already got the Bitcoin white paper in your possession, whether you want it or not. I think this is how convincing and attractive the idea of crypto is. It's It's got this virality that would be almost impossible to defeat. It's like anybody could launch their own fork of Bitcoin and now every single person with a newer Mac 
has got the information to do exactly that if they're so inclined. Of course, crypto, including Cardano, need all that virality because of the cards that are constantly being stacked against it. It turns out that even sanctions, even sanctions compliance is getting harder day by day. And some of the, uh, some of that, what do we call it? Anti-progress is coming from cases that are completely outside of crypto. This is one of them. This poster says, I don't want to unduly worry anyone who is publishing software, but did you know that OFAC just took the position that third-party use of a U.S. entity software to process prohibited transactions constitutes a sanctions violation by that U.S. entity? So that's a lot of words. Let's, let's explain exactly what happened. So basically, and we're going to use some we're going to use some shorthand here, but basically a U.S. bank started a relationship with a European bank. The U.S. bank had a software platform that processed international trades in two ways. The customers could get the U.S. bank to execute those transactions or could execute on its own behalf by using the platform itself. So this EU bank used this software to trade finance financial instruments like letters of credit. The EU bank is not subject, of course, to the U.S. sanctions regime. It's an EU bank. So if the U.S. sanctions somebody, the EU bank doesn't necessarily have to abide by that. So the U.S. bank and the EU bank agreed that the EU bank would not process any transactions prohibited under U.S. law with that platform. And that's what it did. It didn't use the platform to process any transactions. But then at a certain point in 2007, the EU bank didn't want to use multiple platforms anymore. So the US bank, of course, didn't want to lose the business of the EU bank. So they gave the EU bank a client-side version of that same program they could run on their own IT infrastructure. So the EU bank just started running all the OFAC prohibited transactions on its own client side version of that same system that the US bank had published. By published, of course, I just mean that the US bank gave the software to its client. You can imagine exactly where this is going. So publishing in this case just means they, you know, someone who created some software gave it to their client. This is something obviously that happens all the time in crypto. We have all kinds of entities, foundations and labs that publish software and it's used by, you know, someone kind of in, you know, consumers and other parties kind of in the same position as a client of this bank. And here's what Here's what the U.S. regulators said about that. Of course, the European bank was using that using that software to settle all kinds of tractions and uh, transactions, including those involving individuals in the sanctioned countries of Iran, Syria, and Sudan. So, of course, the U.S. regulator said that the U.S. bank has violated san the sanctions regime. Uh, pertaining to transactions of those individuals in those countries. And they cited a total of 124 violations. So the, the big problem here is that this was in the bank context, but of course, this is something that, you know, very possibly applies to anyone publishing software. In fact, you could sort of, uh, the uh, poster here even identifies this as kind of like the panicky interpretation of this, but there will be people who will say that this means that OFAC has taken the position that a software developer can violate the sanctions regime when a third party uses its software, even without the developer's knowledge to independently engage in prohibited transactions. This kind of precedent is definitely problematic for crypto because we just have sort of like the publishing and free distribution of all kinds of crypto software, wallets and nodes, all kinds of software. And there's not really any way to control who uses that software. Somebody could easily use any of that software to facilitate a transaction between an individual and someone else in a sanctioned country. Also, you should be aware, we are in a bit of a special epic. This is Epic 404, which of course inevitably has led to all kinds of jokes about the famous error message. 
finally, it looks like more Cardano music is coming very soon. Nito says, my new song, All Night, will be released as music NFTs exclusively on the upcoming music marketplace by Six City 7 and Project Noom. I really want to play this little teaser clip for you, but I know what will happen. I'll play it, and then somebody will buy the NFT from Nito on Friday, and then they'll try to copyright strike me on YouTube. So I'm not going to play the clip. However, I will say that this little teaser clip, it kind of makes me think this might be my favorite track he's ever put out there. Obviously, I've only heard, what is it, 22 seconds, but the 22 seconds is pretty good. I think this might become my new favorite track that Nito has ever put out there. So I'm looking forward to hearing the whole song. I hope you're having a great week, and I'll talk to you tomorrow.